In the previous X state videos, we learned the very basics of how state machines and X state work by building a very basic traffic light implementation. Now it's time to take it one step further. We are going to be reacting on user input and also fetching remote data. To demonstrate this, we are going to create a dad joke search. Hello, I'm Santiago. On this video, I'm assuming you have some knowledge of Xstate, React, and TypeScript. If you don't, you might want to check out my previous Xstate videos before jumping into this one. You can also find the links to those in the description below. Let's dive right in. Let's talk about our use case first. We are building a dad joke search. The user will type a term in a text input then press a button to fire the search and after a brief loading time we will display the results on a list. Pretty simple, right? I already have the user interface in place because that is not the focus on this video, but don't worry, the entire code example is on the description below. Let's take a quick look at it. We just have some layout, a text input where the user will type a button to fire the search, and a list to display the search results with some classes, just to make it look better. Let's move into the machine creation itself. If you remember from the previous videos, the first thing we have to look at is how the events, state, and context look like. So let's start with the event. In this case, the events are user-driven. The first one is when the user types on an input. And the second one is when the user presses the search button. So only two events. Next up are the states. Uh, we're going to have array state, meaning that the machine is ready to take on user input. We're going to have a searching state, meaning that the machine is busy. And we're going to have a narrow state, which is very self-explanatory. Then we have context, in which we are going to represent our extended state, meaning the input value, the search results, and any errors that might come up. Now let's dive into the code itself and see how these events, states, and contexts play together. This is how the events look like. We have a type event. It has a string value that we get from the text input and the search event, which will send when the user clicks the button. Then let's take a look at state and context together. The context is going to hold the input value, the results array, and an optional error message. On the state types, we are going to have ready and searching, each with a simple jokes context. But on the error one, we are going to make the error message required. Now that we know what events, states, and contexts will manage, we're ready to jump on the machine creation itself. This is the machine definition. At the top, we define our type for the state machine, passing in the context, state, and events. Then we need an ID, an initial state value, initial context, which will have an empty results array and no input value. Then we declare our states. Ready, which will react to the search event and transition over to the searching state, an error stage where we can transition into any of the other two states. And on the searching state, we are making use of another new property, invoke, which represents invoking a given service, which can be a callback, an observable, a promise, or even another state machine. In our case, we are calling the fetch joke function that will return a promise. 
and we declare that using the src property. Fetch joke is simply a fetch call to a third-party API, which will return the jokes back to us in JSON format. Then we define callbacks to handle the results of the service invocation. On done callback is taking a target property of ready. This means then whenever the service we're invoking resolves, we are transitioning the machine over to the ready state. And we also have an inline action here, which assigns the results of our service call into the context results. The on error callback is very similar. It assigns the error message into context and transitions the machine into the error state instead. This happens whenever fetch jokes rejects. The last thing we have on this machine definition is how we handle the type event and how we get the input value into context. Here, we have a global on property. It's global to this state machine because it is defined outside of any state. This means that it doesn't matter in which state the machine is, it will always handle the type event. This type event will trigger the action typing, which we defined in the second parameter of create machine. It simply assigns the input value from the event into context. And that is it. That is our entire machine definition for our use case. Now, let's integrate this in React. First of all, we are making use of the familiar use machine hook that we get from XState, passing in our machine as a parameter. We get back the state which we are destructuring into context and the matches function. And we are also getting the send function to send out our events. We further destructure results, error, and input from context for ease of use. We hook up our text input by making the onChange event send the type event to our machine. And we set the input context value as the text input value, effectively turning it into a control component. Then we hook the onClick from the button to fire the search event. And we disable the button while the state matches the searching state. We are only displaying errors whenever we are on the error state using matches as well. And then we iterate over the results and present them as list items. You can see that the React code looks very clean. All of the business logic is hidden away in the actual machine implementation, and we are only dealing with UI here. Let's try it out now. I am going to input something to search on, then hit search. And there you have the results coming in as expected. I hope this more practical example showcases XState better. I might seem a little bit too complex at first, but I really like the process of creating something using uh, XState because you really have to sit down, break down that feature, and you end up with a very, very clear view of how that feature should work. I also really like how the business logic is abstracted in the machine and how the use machine hook provides a very easy to use, friendly interface for interacting with that logic. And the UI code ends up very clean as a result. That is it for this video. I hope you liked it. And I will see you next time.